All right, praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. God bless you all this morning. Happy Sunday morning. Happy Sunday morning. Happy Sunday morning. We thank God this morning that for another Sunday, the first Sunday in the month of June of 2020, uh, we are thanking God that we are um, moving by his power and by his strength. We are in our um, the, the last month of our calendar year in the aspect of our church's history. And God is allowing us uh, through everything that we are going through, everything we've been through, we are finishing strong. And so we're thankful again for spreading the word, Worship Center. Thank you guys for joining us today uh, for this uh, time of sharing and empowerment and this time of Sunday celebration. Uh, we are thankful that we are the church where everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord. We're thankful this morning that God has allowed us, God, to be able to have uh, our purpose, which is saying that we are uh, equipping men to be fishers of men. We are saturating this world with the love of Jesus Christ. We're changing lives, we're healing relationships, and we're bringing glory to God. We're changing lives, healing relationships, and bringing glory to God. And a lot of that is done through the time of equipping. And so that means that in, uh, in what we do, not just in our purpose, and not just in our, our model, but in our core values. In our, we have four core values that spread in the word. And our four core values are wrapped in around, in around four core words. We have four core values and four core words. And the four words that we have are, we are passionate about. We are passionate about. And so since we are passionate about, we believe God in these four things that we are passionate about. What are you passionate about? All right, so what we're passionate about is spreading the word is, one, we're passionate about purpose. We're passionate about purpose. That is our destiny and our direction. We're passionate about purpose, our destiny and our direction. We're passionate about loving. That means that we are building relationships horizontal and vertical. That means that we are, we are into conflict resolution. We don't run away from conflict but we resolve conflict. It don't mean that we sweep things under the rug. It means that we pull out our broom. It means we pull out our dustpan. And it means we clean it up and we evict the devil out. And we don't, we, we put it on the curb and we leave it there for the garbage man to pick it up with no regrets. So we are passionate about loving. Then we're passionate about giving, which is our tithing, our offering, our mission, and outreach. It also means that we're passionate about our, our giving of our time, and it means also we're passionate about the giving of our talent. We are not just uh, saying that I'm going to throw money at everything, but sometimes we need time. We need time with each other. We need to be able to share our talents with one another. So if somebody is good at doing something, you got to be willing to share what you're good at doing. That means that you know, you're sharing your talent with somebody. You're sharing your time. You're putting some time in. And as the old song says, if you put your time in, payday is coming after a while. Then our last thing we're passionate about is learning. We're passionate about learning, which is our Christian education, our Bible study, and our discipleship. So I know that you must be passionate about learning and, and because you are here today with us and we're, um, um, you know, we're here uh, teaching and when we're doing our teaching YouTube and different things like that, uh, we are interacting and different stuff like that, and we're growing uh, together in the grace of God. So that's that. All that being said, we're thankful again uh, for this opportunity to uh, come before you on this morning. Uh, we're going to get into the Word of God because time don't wait for nobody. All right. So Luke chapter number two is where we're going to be finding our abode on today. Luke chapter number two and verses forty-eight and forty-nine. Luke chapter number 2, verses 48 and 49. That is the Gospel of Luke. So we know in the, in the um, New Testament, we have Matthew, Mark, then Luke. So in the Gospel of Luke, we find chapter number 2, and we're going to be looking at verses 48 and 49. And for, uh, for today's purposes, we'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. In Luke chapter 2, verses 48 and 49. And it reads as follows. It says, And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, 
son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business. I'm going to talk to us again and uh, uh, hopefully encourage us and inspire us and the Lord's Spirit will edify us and strengthen us this morning from the topic of the sermon title, Ain't Nobody Got Time For That. Ain't Nobody Got Time For That. Ain't Nobody Got Time For That. We know that this particular um, um, topic or title has been part of gifts, memes, and uh, comedian skits and different things like that because we saw the lady, you know, outside of a, a scene and she's like, I got time, you know, everybody got time for that because of what is going on. But it was very, it, it, it's very uh, appropriate, I believe, in this day and time that we are living in where people are um, all over except in the right place. People are everywhere except in the right place. Many people are, they are focused on the things that are not uh, beneficial for their health. They're not uh, focused on things that are beneficial for their emotional uh, being. They're focused on things that are not beneficial for their spiritual being. I've been, uh, been talking about uh, this thing for a few months now and saying about as we know, as we come out of what we are currently facing, you should come out better. You should come out growing. You should come out stronger. You should come out with a greater uh, a power and a greater anointing that you are operating in. You should come out in the placement of purpose, and you should come out moving in the strength of your destiny. So you've got to start in your mind and start believing in your heart and saying, ain't nobody got time for that. Luke's, in Luke's writing here, he speaks to us from, from the perspective of Jesus, who is now moving into the next realm in his life. He's moving into the next area of greatness in his life. He's moving in the, great, in the next area of of power in his life. The word tells us, again, I'll read it. It says in 48 and 49, when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou dost dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business. Must not what must you know that I must be about my father's business? He tells us here that they were amazed. Jesus is now in a place where he is now moving into threading the needle of being a spiritual son and a natural son. Jesus is threading the needle of going between his divinity and his humanity. So many of us right now, we are in a place where we must thread the needle. We must begin to thread the needle uh, so that we can stitch some stuff up. Some things are waiting for you to thread the needle. Some things are waiting for you to get into your comfort zone or in your right place. Uh, you may be, if you can be honest right now with yourself, you know, that you feel out of sorts because you're out of place. You're not in the right placement that you need to be in. But you got to get to a place where you are threading the needle. Why are some things you're frustrated now in? Because you are not allowing yourself to get into the place between your humanity and the divinity. Are you operating only in your flesh? Or are you operating in your spirit, man, and your flesh? Are you operating? Because remember, if you are only in the lust of your flesh, that don't just mean from an erotic or sexual connotation. It means anything that you are just operating in your passion about. And if you're only passionate about fleshly things, you are not going to feel fully spiritual.
spiritually satisfied or uh, really fulfill the destiny that you may have in your life at, from a spiritual perspective. Especially those of us who say that we are uh, Christians, those of us who say that we are spirit-filled and spirit-led, those of us who say that we are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, those of us who say that we are uh, God's uh, chosen and his elect, and those of us who say that we are uh, uh, apostles and bishops and pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, and, you know, elders and ministers, and, you know, we all these things, but are you operating in the placement of your purpose? Are you operating and are you, or are you only going and are you threading the needle or are you just comfortable with things being unzipped? Are you, are, are you comfortable with things just hanging out? Are you just comfortable with having stuff, with, with, you walking around with a hole in your destiny? You're walking around with a hole in your purpose. You're walking around with a hole in your mindset. You know, how many of us, our brains are leaking? Our brains are leaking. Our thoughts are leaking the wrong. So we're, 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 we're letting our thoughts run away with us. We're letting our imaginations, the wicked imaginations, coming against us to try to hold us back. But you've got to get in your mind to be able to say, even on today, and say, ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody's got time for, for me to be uh, unhappy and unsatisfied willingly. We're, we're complicit willingly in the aspect of our destiny in our purpose. Because when, you know how do I know you're willingly complicit? When you are not pushing yourself to get better. When you are not uh, operating on the next plane and the next level of the direction that God has given you. When you are not allowing the Spirit of God to lead you consistently in your life. Now, I'm not talking about you walking around being perfect because nobody's perfect. But what I'm talking about is when you're walking around and you are not allowing God and his power to work for you the way that it's supposed to work for you. God is saying you've got to allow his power to work for you. Let it work for you on today. Because when you start letting it work for you, that means you're starting to thread the needle between your spirit and your flesh. You began to say, Jesus gives us the example. He threads the needle between being a spiritual son, God is his father, and a natural son, Mary and Joseph is his mother and father. You've got to understand that this is something that you are called to do and called to be. This is something you're called to do and something you're called to be. Here, look at this, you all. There's something there. This is a quick uh, little nugget that I want to give to you all. Again, I'm trying to pour a quart into a pint on today. So I want you all to uh, uh, help me and, 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 um, and pray for me and, and be able to believe God that he's going to give us some, some strength on today to be able to share what the Lord has given us. All right, so here, the word, it says, this is what God, uh, he, he, he spoken to my spirit uh, when, as I was uh, studying the word of God. He said, he said, Jesus observed the law at 12. Jesus observed the law at 12, at 12 years old. At the age of 12 years old, he began to observe the law according to the feast of Pentecost. Right? He observed the law and uh, he, didn't, he had to begin to move in what they were given to do. So now we just had Pentecost Sunday last Sunday, right? We understand that Jesus began to be a son of the law. And, you know, he began to submit himself to the process of his destiny. He began, at 12 years old, guys, he began to submit himself to the process of Destiny. There's a process of destiny. He began to uh, uh, attend the Feast of the Passover, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. He began to, and his mother and his father began to operate in the understanding of passing on lineage and direction to different things. This is, again, a leadership principle that all of us can take. You've got to be willing to take or attempt to take what is being given and handed over to you. You got to stop fighting City Hall about every little thing. You got to stop fighting the direction that God has given the people who are responsible to be able to help you get to your next. 
You got to start making up your mind that you're going to follow diligently as to what it is that it has been given. Can you imagine? Now, we're talking about threading the needle, right? Between spiritual and natural. We're talking about threading the needle. Can you imagine, firstly, on the spiritual end, can you imagine that when God was looking all through the earth, and he was trying to find somebody to be a sacrifice and to be able to lead his people back to redemption. If Jesus was like, I ain't doing all that. And, and Jesus would have put, you, know, you asking me to do too much. Or Everybody Jesus would have been, you know, hey, Jesus, been, Jesus would have told God, I ain't, got, no, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Jesus didn't say that, right? Jesus wasn't looking at it from, the, from that perspective. He was threading the needle between what was to come and what was going and what is. You've got to know what is at that particular point was the earth was upside down because it did not have a savior. He, that was what it is. He knew but what was to come was if he became and, and, and submitted to the leading of his spiritual father, what would happen for him would be that the, all the world would have a right to the tree of life. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And yes. now from a natural perspective, wouldn't you, would you look at how Jesus had to thread the needle of submitting to fathership and submitting to parenthood? Because it tells us at the age of 12, it says in Luke chapter 2, right? This is when they began to do it. At, 20, at, at Luke chapter 2, verses 40 through 42, it says, And the child grew. Look at this. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. What, are, what, what customs are you trying to deny? What customs are you trying to get away from? And you're wondering why things are not maybe working right and you can't seem to thread that needle. Maybe because you're not following the customs that were set in before you. Maybe you are trying, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we, most of us who got cars, most of our cars got how many wheels? Four wheels, right? Most of our cars got four wheels. Are you trying to drive your car with three wheels? No, you're not trying to do it that way because you're following the custom that was set before you. When you go to the car lot and you're looking at your nice fancy car, I know some of y'all got nice, nice, nice rides and, and, and all this other kind of stuff. You and not, you're looking at it and you looked at it generally and you got attracted to it because you saw somebody else have it. You saw somebody else and you looked at the custom that was made. You didn't go into the into the into the BMW dealership and that 760 that was there and you say, look, I want that car, but I only want it with three wheels. You didn't do that. You went there, you said, okay, I want this car. How much do it cost? Oh, it cost $80,000? Okay, no problem. Let me get my down payment or oh, here, run my credit. And, uh, you know, I ain't got no money. You know how we go through all these games and the negotiations and everything. But we do, we, at the core of it, we take the base of how it is. And you got to learn that if, uh, for us to be successful, for us to be successful people, here, this is the point. Successful people never outgrow our foundation, but grow out from our foundation. That's good. Successful people never outgrow our foundation, but grow out from our foundation. You grow out from your foundation. You don't outgrow your foundation. We got to learn, people of God, that the Lord is saying that Jesus, who was the, who, now, look, I ain't never seen nobody, you know, I've been seeing this on search all over, Found nobody, right? Nobody greater than him. Nobody greater than him. And he he showed us and he gave us a methodology to be able to be successful in life and in the kingdom. Do you want to amaze people or do you want people to say, you really, that really, that really just dumbfounded me? Do, do you want to amaze people or do you want people to be dumbfounded by your actions? Do you want people to be dumbfounded by your actions or you want them to be amazed by your actions? You want them to be amazed by your actions in the aspect of that they see you growing out from something, not thinking that you are outgrowing something. When people are always running around talking about what they outgrew, generally it's, just, it's really steeped mostly in rebellion. 
Mm. Generally, it's steeped mostly in rebellion. When you say that you outgrew something, it's just like you look at your natural children. When your natural children, they really never, they really never outgrow their parents. They grow out from their parents. They grow out from their parents. You've got to understand that God is saying that we're going to grow out from some things. And you got to start saying, I ain't got no time for doing stuff the dumb way. I ain't got no time to do stuff the wrong way. I ain't got no time for that. I have no time to do it this particular way because I want to do it this way. And I, I, I surely don't have no time to be rebellious. So we, we grow out from things. We don't outgrow things. When we learn that, okay, because it's still a foundational principle. It's still a foundational principle. Every building, you, the, every building that you go in got a foundation. Every building you go in, I don't care if you go to the 99th floor or the 100th floor of the Sears or the Willis Tower, you still got to know at the bottom it's got a foundation. That's where it started from. God is saying that I'm going to allow things to start from the foundation and grow up and grow out from. And you may be, you may be the antenna all the way to the top of the skyscraper, but you still grew up from or grew out from that foundation. Jesus gives us the example, and he said that when it was time for him to turn 12, he started moving with his parents to follow the custom of the feast. He started moving to be able to follow the custom of the Passover. He started moving to follow the custom of Pentecost. He started moving to grow and to be able to follow the custom of the tabernacle. So if Jesus can follow the principles, why can't you? Mm, that's good. If Jesus can follow the principles, why can't you? Why is it that we think that we can do something better than the Lord did? Well, why do we think that we can do something at a greater capacity than the Lord did? But you got a hangnail and you can't take and you can't take a hangnail. You can't take an angle on toenail. So you telling me you can take a crown of thorns on your head? No, of course not. You've got to understand so that we follow the principles if we, unless we think that we're greater than the provider of the principles. All right? So we follow these things. And when we do these things, we learn how God begins to work. It tells us, it says, Jesus, is, and the child grew, and he waxed strong in spirit. But then here, the, 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 the third thing that he did, he was filled with wisdom. Somebody got to say, I'm smart enough to follow. The customs. I'm smart enough to follow the customs. I'm smart enough to grow out from and not outgrow. I'm smart enough. I have enough wisdom to be able to move in the power of what God has given me. Because when I do those things, guess what happens? Great grace or the grace of God will be upon me. We want the grace of God to be upon us. And we need to do some deep diving in evaluation as to is, is the God is the grace the grace of God working on my life the way it's supposed to. Again, somebody said thread the needle. You gotta thread, thread the, the needle. needle. You gotta thread, thread the, the needle. needle. You gotta thread the needle. Let me move on here. I told you I was trying to pour a quart into a pint here on this morning. Here, the next point that I want to make to us is that, like this. Don't allow the familiar to make you a function of failure. Don't allow the familiar to make you a function of failure. Are you functioning in failure? You've gotten so used to failing that it don't bother you no more. Are you functioning in failure? You've gotten so used to the abuse that it don't even matter no more. You just know them now. So you just take the hit. You just take the beating. You just take the cursing out. You just take the bad, uh, the bad boss on the job. You just think that you don't have no other way but to deal with this. But you got to say that I'm not going to allow the familiar to make me a function of failing. I will not allow the familiar to make me a function of failure. Verse 43 and 44 of uh, chapter 2 of Luke says, And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child tarried 
or waited behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Isn't there something here? Let, 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 let me, something just came across my mind and it came across my spirit. Isn't it amazing how Luke says, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Luke begins to pin and begins to put the, the thread the needle of Jesus now being the son of God mm. in the aspect in that moment. He begins to be, he, 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 because he recognized that he said, this is Joseph. This is not Jesus' father. This is not the carpenter's boy at this point because he's doing some kingdom business. He's threading the needle of divinity mm -hmm. in the aspect of what's going on in that moment. He's threading the needle of divinity in that aspect. So he wants the reader to be able to understand the shift. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Is anybody in your life right now understanding the shift that is happening in your life? Is anybody in your life understanding that God is shifting you to another capacity of greatness. That God is shifting you to grow out from Oh my God, and not out grow. Is anybody understanding that God is shifting you out of your normal or your familiar surroundings? Now, that don't just mean that you're moving out of your house. It just means maybe you're looking at your house in a new perspective. Mm. Oh my God. It don't mean Good. that it don't it, it don't mean it don't mean that that you know that you gotta get this you gotta find you a new boo. It just might just mean that your relationship you gotta, you gotta do some work and make mm. your relationship a little bit That's better. Good. It don't That's mean good. that you gotta go and buy you a new car that you can't afford and be in a bad bad steward. It just might mean that you just need to wash that car. It don't mean that you need a, 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 a you know a new china set, but you gotta stack, but you gotta stack full of dishes right now. You don't need you don't need mm -hmm. nothing else. You need to you might just need to have a new view on what you get. Yes, Lord. Oh my mm. God. You don't need to jump from church to church all the time. Sometimes you just need to become a better church member. Oh God. Oh my God. Hey somebody, and I, if, if we were in the building, I would say what? Amen, lights. <laughs> you know, like bulbs. Talk to me today. You know, talk to me today because you got to understand that God is saying that we cannot function in failure. But we've got to not allow ourselves to be familiarized with that. Because as I was looking at it, and as I was studying it, and as I was meditating on it, the thing that I, I recognize is this. Supernatural occurrences are found in unfamiliar situations. Mm -hmm. Supernatural occurrences generally are found in unfamiliar situations. None of us were born to get sick. None of us were born to be like a woman who had an issue of blood. Obviously, it was something wrong with that. It was something wrong with the woman having an issue of blood. How do we know that? Because she had to go from doctor to doctor. She had to go from place to place. She had to spend all that she had to try to get the issue fixed. She had to try to get the issue fixed because it was something that was wrong with that. The centurion's daughter, uh, you know, it was something wrong with that, because children generally are running around, playing hopscotch, tiddling wings, uh, jumping rope, they're doing all these other things. They're not laid up in the bed uh, dying. Something's wrong with that. So that's unfamiliar situations. But supernatural occurrences are the breeding ground of unfamiliar situations. Mm. Unfamiliar situations, when the doctor says, well, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. And when the doctor says, well, hey, look, hey, I know, I, I, I'm going to tell y'all about the story that I heard about. There, there, was, this, there was this guy who, who had, a, who had a, a, a stroke or something like that, right? And he, as he had a stroke, and then he was on blood thinners for a few days, right? This is a story that somebody told me, and they told me, and they, they was testifying about this real good to me. And, and so he had, he had the stroke, and he was on blood thinners for a few days, and then on the fifth day or so, that his brain began to swell, and because his brain began to swell, he had already been on blood thinners for five days. So when he had to go to surgery, what happened? He had to, he, the, the doctor told him, said, look, if we, either we cannot do the surgery and his brain, brain going to swell and he's going to die, or he can, or we can have surgery and it's a possibility because he's been on blood thinners for five days that he's going to bleed out. That's when you find yourself in unfamiliar situations. Because the five days before, that same person was in the gym. 
working out. That same person was running around doing things and preaching and teaching and talking to people and loving on people and working a job and doing all the other kind of things. This is what I was told, y'all. So understand, unfamiliar situations breed supernatural occurrences. Guess what happened? I talked to that person this morning. I talked to that person this morning, and that person had a supernatural occurrence of healing because that person is in church this morning. My God, you got to understand that God is saying that unfamiliar, you cannot allow the familiar to make you a function of failure. But when you are stuck for a long time, as much as you act like you want to change, our actions often betray our words. When you are stuck for a long time, as much as you act like you want to change, our actions often will betray our words. How do I know this? Okay, the Bible declares to us in John chapter 5, verse number 5. And it says, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years. And a certain man was there, and he had an infirmity 38 years. He got used to functioning and failure. Somebody needs to say, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. As much as we act like we, man, we act like we want something to happen. We act like we want things to happen for us. We act like we want things to change. But are you functioning in your failure? Or are you hungry for the real change mm. to occur in your life? You're acting like you want your marriage to be better. But you ain't doing nothing to make it better. You're acting like you, you, you want your relationships to be better, but you're not doing nothing to make it better. You, you're walking around with a spirit of offense all the time. So if you're walking around with a spirit of offense all the time, you're not doing anything to make it better. You're acting like you want to lose weight, but you don't want to sweat. You don't want to put down, you don't want to get, you don't, you don't want to, you can't just have two cookies, you got to have four and a half. You get, you know, you oh, acting Lord. like you you acting like mm. you want a uh, you want a a, a a master's degree, a doctorate degree, a bachelor's degree, but you got poor study habits, and you don't have a discipline to be able to cut the TV off or Facebook off. But you always you all you can you can read and you can and recite to me everything that every person said on their status. But you can't tell me what the book said that you will say that you are divide, that you are called and destined to study in. Hmm. If you can't tell me what what the, what the book said that you said your destiny about, why would I care what Facebook said? Why would I care what Twitter said? Why would I care about what Kim Kardashian and the Kardashian sister said? Why would I care uh, what Jay Z said? Write your own song. Why would I care? about uh, your favorite musician said, and you are called to play the, the music yourself. Why would you care? Why would anybody care if you don't care? You got to <laughs> stop acting like you want it. And you got to make your actions not betray your words. Are your actions betraying your words? Somebody ask your neighbor. Ask somebody on your, in your block. Ask somebody down the street. Ask somebody in the grocery store. If you're running around in the fourth reserve right now, ask them are your actions betraying your words. <laughs> you know, ask if you're, if you're at home with your kids or whatever. Wherever you're at, ask somebody, are your actions betraying your words? Because when it's time for supernatural occurrences to happen, you've got to be willing to allow that unfamiliar situation to happen and come to an end. Unfamiliar situation. See, you can't, see, you gotta stop getting familiar with stuff that's supposed to be unfamiliar to you. You gotta start, you gotta start, you gotta start, you know, you gotta get yourself in the mindset, guys, that I cannot get comfortable with what's supposed to be unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. I gotta get, not get comfortable with what's supposed to be unfamiliar. You know, you can't get comfortable. Even in the aspect of, say if, say if you operate in miracles, and, and say if that's one of your giftings or whatever right there, or if you operate and you preach, you can't just get comfortable. And, oh, I just know the Lord going to do this for me, and I know the Lord going to do that for me. What if, the, what if your voice don't work? 
Or say if you're a musician and you decide, you know, you know, you you're really great at doing, you're really playing and everything, but you just can't get comfortable. You gotta always anticipate that the Lord can give a, have a supernatural occurrence to happen, so that you don't become a function of failure. My last thing, and I'm gonna let y'all go, is simply this: the time has come. For us to answer the door for our destiny. The time has come for us to answer the door for our destiny. The time has come for us to answer the door for our destiny. Question is this. What happens when what you are used to prevents you from getting to what you are going to? What happens when what you are used to prevents you from getting to what you are going to? Mm -hmm. I know that's one of those that's one of those uh, math equations sound like right. What are what happens when what you are used to prevents you from getting to what you are going to? What happens, guys, when what you are used to prevents you from getting to? what you are going to. You got to ask yourself a simple question. Are you going to answer the door for destiny? Are you going to answer the door for destiny? A few weeks ago, I, 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 asked, I asked my beautiful wife, I said, go ring the doorbell for me. And I ain't going to ask you to do it today. And you know, but I said, go ring the doorbell for me. Go knock on the door. Are you going to answer the door for your destiny, guys? Are we going to answer the door for our destiny? What we are dealing with right now in our world is an opportunity of a lifetime. What we are dealing with right now is an opportunity because God is shifting us. Right now is an opportunity for us to grow out from our foundation, not our grow out foundation. God is saying that we have to get in the place to be able to know that Nothing's going to get in our way from us answering the door to our destiny. Jesus did not, he, 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 he stayed in the place of, of humanity as a son until he was 12 years old. And he answered the door for his destiny. Because all he was, all he was waiting to, all he was waiting for was a vehicle to drive him to the place of his destiny. Mm, my God. The vehicle that drove him to his place of his destiny was his mother and his natural father. Because they honored and they followed the custom of the Feast of the Pentecost, Passover, and the Tabernacles. And they was the vehicle. See, the custom will take you someplace. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The customs that God has already established in the world will take you someplace. Voting from a natural perspective will take you someplace. Being active in engagement of social situations will take you someplace. Being active in your local church will take you someplace. Being active in serving God and man will take you someplace. Not isolating yourself will take you someplace. Trusting again will take you someplace. And when it takes you to that place, you're going to be ready to answer the door. Yes. Jesus was ready to answer the door. Jesus was so ready to answer the door, Gina. It was just like this. Joseph and Mary in the, in the whole caravan, they got, they got off on their horses and their the camels and all that kind of stuff. And they was packing up and going back home. And Jesus was like, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Jesus said, like, nobody got time. Nobody got time for the normal. Nobody got time. I know, I look, I, I was born in the manger. I know all the way about all these things. I, I've been raised all this time. My birthday came. It signified a shifting. It signified a transition. So now, you have driven me to my destiny and then expect me to want to go back to my normal? 
Glory to God. When are you going to get to the place in your life where you're going to say, I don't want normal another day? Matter of fact, if you put that in the comment field, it'll be real great. I don't want normal another day. I don't want normal another day. Jesus said, I don't want normal another day. Because the word tells us in, in 46 and 47 of Luke chapter 2, it says, and it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking questions. All and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. See, now you got to know it's not on you. It's on you now. Not what they said, did, or thought about you. See, because when you when you when you've been driven when you've been driven to your destiny, and the doorbell rings or somebody knocks on the door. But destiny knocks on the door for you. It's on you now to answer the door. Matter of fact, I, I, I just wish you would just say it out of your mouth. Just say, I'm the only one at home. You know how you're the only one at home? Because it's your destiny. Wow. You're the only one that can answer this. It's your destiny. It ain't who tried to stop you. It ain't about your haters. It ain't about those people. It ain't about the people who, well, you know, who want to say this and want to do that. It ain't about all the people that did all the negative things. Yes, they did those things. They did them to David. David's own people. Remember in 1 Samuel 30? They had took all of his wives and burned the town down and everything. And then his own people started failing them for fear. But he still knew that he had to answer the door to destiny. And when he answered the door to destiny, he had a conversation with destiny. Shall I pursue this or should I let it go? And he told him, surely you will recover all. But if you don't answer the door, you can't have a conversation. Have you ever been so scared that you, you you're so scared to answer the door that you, you're peeking out the window from the upstairs and behind the dark curtain so that nobody can't see you? And it might have been, it might have been Steve Harvey or every man with the public security house check. <laughs> and you too busy being scared to answer the door to your destiny. If you the only one at home, you're the only one at home. So it ain't about me it's trying to stop you. It ain't about your boo trying to drop you. It ain't about your, your manager trying to fire you. It ain't about the restaurant not going to serve you. It ain't about Donald Trump trying to block you. It's simply about you now. Will you answer the door to your destiny? Will you answer the door to your destiny? So you got to say, you know what, fear? Ain't nobody got time for that. Failure? Ain't nobody got time for that. Low self-esteem? Ain't nobody got time for that. Anger and bitterness and unforgiveness? Ain't nobody got time for that. Delay? Ain't nobody got time for that. I will not be held up because I'm the only one that's at home with my destiny. Yes. And I yes. gotta answer the door for it. Gotta answer the door. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We honor you and we glorify you. We bless your holy and righteous name because you are the Lord of the breakthrough and the Lord of all. We honor you this morning and we say, God, you have your way in our life. Help us, God, to know, Lord, that what we have time for and what we don't have time for. Help us, God, to not outgrow our foundations, but grow out from our foundations. Help us, God, not to allow the familiar to make us a function of failure. Help us, God, to walk in the supernatural occurrence because we know that you will sometimes place us in unfamiliar situations so that your glory can happen in our life. And help us, God, again, to 
answer the door for our destiny. God, we won't blame nobody else, but we will take self-accountability and we will move in the power of our todays and our tomorrows. And we will conquer our fears yes. of our yesterdays. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And we will overcome. Yes. And we will walk in it. And we will do, even as you did, and even as you said in Luke chapter 2, Thank you. we will be about our Father's business. Yes. And we thank you for these things today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless you all this morning. Again, if you um, don't know the Lord, the pardon of your sins, those who are watching us, uh, you don't know the Lord on the pardon of your sins, in the pardon of your sins, I want to encourage you to get to know him. If you don't know how, I would love to walk with you and help you to go through the process of uh, converting and cha changing your life and turning your life over, being repenting and, and making Jesus your Lord and your Savior. I would love to help you to walk through your process of being discipled and growing. Even as Jesus did in Luke chapter 2, he grew in spirit. He waxed strong and he had wisdom and the grace of God worked upon him. That can be your testimony as well. Inbox me, direct message me. Uh, however you can reach me, contact me. And I would love to help you move into the place of your destiny. Destiny is knocking at your door. It's time for you to give it up to him. And it's time for you to answer the door to changing your life and making Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. If you're already saved and you just want prayer, you reach out to me. Uh, you know, uh, if you don't mind, if you don't want to, you can put it in the comments if you want to. If you don't want nobody to know what you want prayer about, all you got to do is in, you know, uh, inbox me, message me, and I will pray with you and pray for you. Then uh, lastly, if you don't have a church home, and you would like to spread the word uh, worship center to be your church home, I don't care if you're on the other side of the moon. If you see in this video, then you can contact us. Everybody needs a pastor. Everybody needs a church home. Everybody needs a place of connection and where to belong. And even if you are way away, God can still use this church to be a blessing to your life. And we can help to get you set up and planted even in an area that you may be uh, locally, uh, locally around so that when uh, the world fully opens back up, then you can go and you don't have to just be digital. But right now, you need to have a church home. And I would encourage you all to not just be out here and just, you know, floating from place to place or whatever, but getting some roots and getting planted in a good church. And if you want to give today, if you would like to give today, we would, uh, we, we would be honored for you to sow your seed here at Spreading the Word, uh, you can give by PayPal or Zelle. If you have a PayPal or Zelle, uh, that is S-T-W-W-C-C-H-I at gmail.com. Or Cash App, uh, dollar sign, all caps, S-T-W-M. If you, uh, are, uh, you know, if you're a techie or whatever, you're an app person, and you have a Givelify app or Givelify.com, uh, you can go on there. We're on Givelify as well. And uh, that's under Spreading the Word Worship Center. And you can sow your seed there as well. So we are thankful. Again, we are in our last uh, month of our year, of our 18th year. We'll be celebrating 19 years in uh, the first Sunday in July. Uh, it'll be 19 years that the Lord has allowed us to be a church, a, a, a full functioning church. So we're thankful uh, for all that God has done in our life. You all have an incredible day. Have an incredible Sunday. Uh, there's so many great things that are happening in the kingdom of God. You all be encouraged, be strengthened in everything, and know that you ain't got no time for that. You ain't got no time for nothing but supernatural occurrences to be released in your life. Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.